Hello and welcome. I am Raghav from Automation Step by Step and today we are going to go very basic step by step and we are going to learn what is page object model and we will implement page object model in Cypress. So let's get started and let us first see what exactly is page object model. Now this is a design principle and page object model principle says that we should keep our objects or the object locators and the methods or the actions on the objects separate from our test script. Now do not worry if you do not get this statement. I will show you in a moment how exactly this is done. But this is what a page object model principle says and this is done to make reusability very efficient or reuse all our objects and methods and also it helps us in making our testing and maintenance easier, efficient and faster so that we do not have to invest a lot of time whenever there is a change from the application. Let us look at a demo and everything will be very easy to understand. I will go and open my Visual Studio code and here I have my project. This is my Cypress folder and I have all these folders here. Uh, I have a integration folder and I will create a new file here. So let me create a file for doing a login test and I will say this is login.ts. Now you can create a JS file that is JavaScript. You can still follow along exactly what I am doing. So I am creating this file login.ts and here I will create a test. I will say it and I will say this is login test and function and a curly bracket start and stop and here I can start writing my test. So here I will try to go to a sample website. This is my sample website and here I will try to do a login and here let me see if we have a login option. Yes we have this login box here so I can use this. So let me just copy this and I will say here cy dot visit and this is my application and I will save this and let me just run my Cypress. I will say npx. I am going to my terminal. You can just go from here or press control and back tick key on your keyboard. I will say npx Cypress open and this opens the Cypress UI and here I will click on this file login.ts and it opens the browser and it is running our application so this is running fine. Now let me go to the login section so that I can get the locators for the username and password and yes it is here. So I will use the selector playground here and go to the login section and this is the username box. I will copy this and this is the ID so I can just copy the command from here and paste in my code and similarly for password I will get the locators copy the command paste here and for login button so I will copy the command and paste it here now I will also add the actions. So for the username I will have to type the username and if you see here we have this username test and password test. Now you can use this on any application just in case you find that this application is not available or is down. You can do the hands on on any of the applications that you have. I will also provide the link of this application in the notes or description section of this video. So here I will say type and I will say test this is the username then for password again I will say dot type and I will say test and for login button I will have to click so I will say dot click and that's it let me save and run this again and yes this is working fine let me run this again and everything is running fine so now I have created a very simple login test now if you see here we are using the test script along with the object locators and their functions in the same script. Everything is 
here within this test script or within the same file which may not be a very good and efficient process or a very good way in case something changes in future let us say the id of username box changes in future and i have used this username at multiple locations in different tests in that case it will be very difficult to go to all the locations wherever i have used this object and make all the changes it will not be a very efficient and a fast process also in case i have to make any changes in the action due to any backend changes again i will have to do the same thing so this is not a very efficient way of keeping all the test scripts the object the locators and the actions on the objects in the same code and that is why we use page object model so that we can separate out the objects and their actions in a separate file or a separate class and for that i'm first going to create a folder now if you want you can create a folder within your integration or some other folder but let me just go to my cypress folder and create a new folder and i will call this as pages and inside the pages folder now i will create a new file called login page i can say login underscore page dot ts now again you can use a dot js extension for javascript it will be the same i will tell you if there are any differences so here i have created a separate file for login page objects and similarly for every page on your application you can create a separate file under the pages folder now here i will create a class i will say class and i will give the name login page and that's it and i also want to import this class in a different module so i will say this i will add export here so this makes this class to be imported in a different script file or a module now here i will just copy the statements from my login file so i will copy this so i have to navigate to the application then add a username add a password and then click on the login button now i will tell you different ways of implementing page object model let us start with the easiest and the most basic way i will first create the methods for all the actions i have to use for example navigate to url i will create a method called navigate and then i have to enter a username i will say enter username and create a method here and then i will create a method for enter password i will say enter password and then i will create a method for click on login button i will say click click login and that's it now i will just go here and copy these statements from here from my login test to the functions here so for navigate i will copy this cy.visit this is for entering username i will copy and paste it here and then similarly for password this is the command copy and paste and finally click on the login button i will copy this and paste it inside this function so we have created a separate class having all the methods and the objects and the actions on the objects now i will go back to my login.ts the first thing i will have to do is i will have to import the login page class here or the login uh, page file and the module here so i will say import and here i will say login page this is the class name and i will say from and in double quotes i will have to give the location from where i have to import this class so if i say dot forward slash and let me see if i can directly go to i will say so i have to go uh, two steps up the folder so i will say dot dot and i should get pages so i have got the pages folder so please make sure that you give the dots as per the hierarchy you have to go up i was in my integrations folder so i am into this login.ts file which is under integration folder first i have to move out of this folder so i will go up to the cypress folder and then go to pages folder so therefore i have used double dots pages and then here 
I can say again forward slash and I will use this login page and you can see now there are no errors. Now I will have to create a object of the login page class. Now until now we have not used the describe block but as of now let me keep it very simple. I will tell you about this later. I can directly create an object. I can say let and I can give any variable name. Let us say login page equals new and the class name login page. Now let is used to create a variable and you can use the same in JavaScript or TypeScript. In earlier versions of JavaScript, you can change let in case you are not able to use let you can change it with where. However, in the latest versions let should work. And when you create a variable like this, you may be able to change the values later. But in this case, we do not want to change the value of this variable. So I can use instead of let I can say const so that the value will be fixed and it will not be changed. Now I can use this login page object to access all the methods and property of the login page class. So here in this test function, I can say login page dot and I as I click dot, you can see all these functions I can use from that class. So first I will say navigate and then I will say login page dot enter username then I will say login page dot enter password and I will say login page dot click login and you can also use semicolon at the end which is optional but is a good practice so let me just use this and now you can see this code is now replaced with this code which looks very clean and easy and also now you can see if there is there are any changes in the action or the objects instead of going into the test scripts and in, instead of going everywhere wherever you have used the objects and the actions I just have to go to this single file that is the login page class and I can make changes here now there are some more efficient things that we can do but before that let me just go back to my login.ts class or that login.ts file and remove all the earlier code and let me save and run and check if it is running fine and yes looks like this all is running fine so now I will go back now here one thing that you will notice is we are still hard coding the values that is the URL of the application the username the password everything here which again is not a very good practice or not a very efficient thing I should be having a option that this can be passed from the test script so here for the navigate function I will take the parameter URL and the pa and then pass the parameter here and then this URL should come from the location from where this function is called which is our login test and you can see it is showing me an error now because it is expecting an argument so I will have to pass this from here and everything is fine if I run this everything is running fine now if I go back to my login page you can see I am getting this error here and that is because I have not given any type for this parameter and this is something you will not find in JavaScript this is the advantage of having TypeScript TypeScript is a extended version of JavaScript and it allows us to include the types. So I can say colon and say string. So it is of type string and now the error is gone. If you are using JavaScript, you may not be doing this, which is fine. You can still continue with just the parameter name. So we have done for this navigate function. Let me do the same for enter username. I will say it should accept a parameter called username it can be anything you can name it anything and again I will say this should be of type string and here instead of hard coding this I will say it should get this parameter from here the same thing I will do for enter password I will say get a parameter password again of type string and this is what will go here so this is now done and of course I will have to go back to my login test and have to 
pass the values from here and now you can see it has become reusable this function navigate enter username and enter password I can now use with any values from the test the values are not hard coded and let me also check I will run again and see everything is working fine this is fine now let me go one step ahead and here in my login page you can see I am adding all the object locators within the methods or the functions now in case I just want to keep them separate I can do that as well for example I can just create some variables let me say uh, I can say here login page username and the locator we are using is this hash uname I will copy this and add it here and this variable name you can decide as per the best practices now what I'm doing is I'm giving the page name login page and then underscore the object name so this is a good practice I can just analyze uh, somebody can uh, look at this name and can refer that this username is on the login page if you want you can also say underscore and maybe give the uh, locator or the property we are using like id or something but this should be fine and similarly i will say login page underscore password and here this is what we are using as a locator and then login page underscore login button let me say button here and then i will give the locator which is this one copy and paste it here and now I will have to replace this hard-coded locators with the variables that I have created so here I will say login page username and you can also notice it has added that this keyword this represents that this particular variable is a class variable so it will always refer to this class variable and then similarly for password I will say login page underscore password and here I will say login page and the login button so now you can see all the objects of this page are stored separately here along with its locator and these are the actions or the methods of these objects or the actions on these objects so we have the objects and the locators stored separately the methods stored here and in the test script we just have the test steps and the data is being passed from here so you can see how modular it is now and this is a very very small example in real world you can have hundreds of objects here and many methods here and the same will go with the test steps you can have multiple test steps and now you can imagine if there are any changes from the back end on the object locators or methods you do not have to go to each and every test and each and every step wherever you have used those objects and actions you just have to go to the page class of that particular page just make the changes here or maybe here if required and then you are done so this is done let me again save and run and check this I will run this again and yes everything is fine so everything is working perfectly and you can see how clean our test is now so this is how we do page object model in Cypress and I hope this was very useful for you please share your knowledge with everyone and do some more hands-on I will see you in the next session thank you for watching and never stop learning